This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorg Tron on the Blur. Yes, it is so many weeks and I still have that uh, throat cold going on, but we're still going to get a lot of these interviews in the can. Uh, of course, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can check out all the Indie Mayhem Show episodes over there, as well as uh, on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Google Play Podcasts, as well as video versions on Wrestling Mayhem Show and the uh, oh, sorry, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and the YouTube page. And thanks to our friends that are supporting the show on Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. You could also drop us a line at good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and 412-206-WMS0. So uh, this week, our uh, guest is uh, somebody was one of the two uh, uh, individuals that we first ever interviewed on the Wrestling Mayhem Show back in the day. At the time, he was part of sexual harassment. Now he just loves cats. Justin Idol is joining us in the studio. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? So we were catching up. We'll catch up with the last ten years of your career now. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> it's been a long time. I've yes. used a lot. I don't know what camera is this right here. Oh, it's this one up here. Oh, okay. There you there go. Cameras everywhere. Hey, anyway, just talk to me. It's all right. Okay. So, <laughs> unless you want in to case talk. I got to do something dumb, I want to look unless, at the camera. Unless you want to talk to Rev and Dolly out there hanging out, okay. so you can go. You can talk to them up there. So, uh, but anyways, uh, we, you know, we like a little. I don't expect. I don't expect anybody to go through the pain of listening to our first interview because, man, we were not good back then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, ten years of podcasting. Uh, but uh, you know, what is your first kind of memory of pro wrestling? Like how I got started? No, no. How, what was your first memory? memory of like being introduced to it or um, watching it? Yeah. Well, oh, gosh, I don't know what sticks out. For some reason, what sticks out in my mind is, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of the the pay per view, which what it was. I'm trying to think of the match, like um, Hogan Warrior. I think a lot of people give that uh probably give that answer yeah it's such an iconic moment in wrestling right um but for some reason that sticks out in my mind uh wrestling to me back in the day for some reason i don't know you know what other wrestlers feel or what fans feel i just think wrestling was brighter back in the day you know mm. what i mean is that is that weird like over time maybe it's the camera hd cameras and things like that but the ropes were brighter everything was uh the, the blues the yellows i don't know something about that just drew me in mm -hmm. like it made me the, the big blue cage remember that thing uh -huh. instead of the regular cage uh things like that you know just it just drew me in so and that match like things like earthquake versus hulk hogan um, when he did the, not the bonsai drop, but the, what was the name of it? Um, I think it was the earthquake, just the earthquake or tremors yeah, or something. Yeah. And he just crossed the guy's chest. I remember just my earliest memories are just believing it. Like, Oh my God, Hogan's dead. He's dead. No one can survive that. You know, then, then he, he but Hogan always survived. I don't know, you know, <laughs> but like things like that, you so know, like kind of, it was like kind of brighter and not cartoony, but it was. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like WrestleFest, that video game yeah. it was in the arcade, things like that. Just like everything was so bright and it just, you know, it was so, uh, I don't know, bigger than life, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that's what like, you know, that just drew me to wrestling. So that's what probably my earliest memory is something, you know, might be a kind of a corny answer, but it's a little different probably than most people's answers. You know, I've heard so. the weirder. Okay, good, 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 good. good. Yeah. Um, how, what, what kind of like uh transition do you like to that to eventually like at that point, was it something you wanted to get into or is it something you kind of developed that thought later on? Yeah. It, wrestling was never something that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I messed around and stuff like that, but it was never something that I watched religiously. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I, I mean, I watched it, but not like I didn't have to see an event. You know, um, there was probably when I actually trained to become a wrestler. Before I trained, I probably didn't watch wrestling for about three years or so. You know, so when I actually trained. And that's how I got into wrestling. It was, you know, it's a different story. But, um, you know, I hadn't been watching wrestling at the time. So, you know, it, it, it didn't play much of, you know, a, um, a reason for me to get into wrestling as more so as it kept me in wrestling once I started training. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. then I started getting all those memories back and, you know, the love for it and everything. So tell me about that. Like, how did so, you decide to, to go train if you were kind of not really invested right. in wrestling at the time? So what happened was uh, I was I wrestled in high school. 
I was uh, very athletic. I was giftedly athlete, athletically gifted. Uh, not anymore. Um, I loved acting and actually went to college for acting, uh, theater studies in front of and behind the camera. I think actually we've talked about that maybe once or twice behind the camera work. Cause I offered, Hey, if you don't need someone to run a camera, you know? <laughs> um, but I was, so I was, I was into acting. I was in the, uh, you know, athletic sports, wrestling and everything. Um, I'm a pretty resilient kid. Uh, so all that said, my best friend at the time, his name was Eric coincidentally, cause Eric, I had an Eric as a tag partner for years, uh, knew, worked with somebody who used to wrestle and who recently had opened the wrestling school. Cause you know, sometimes wrestling schools just pop up wherever in the weirdest places. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just, they thought I'd be good at it. So I just wanted to try out. And I was actually trained in a hollowed out, uh, meat locker, a free, like a freezer, you know, where they store meat. So it's probably, I don't know, as big as this room It's probably, 20 feet by 30 feet and it was you know, hollow it wasn't a it had the big door like you're going into a freezer that handle you open it up that's how it went in and it was this hollowed out room uh you know old rinkety ring no padding you know it was very Jeez. old school very old school wow just in a crappy location but then i i tr- practiced they said the tryout usually lasts about a half an hour and my tryout lasted two hours so you know they just and i just i loved it i just i, I wanted more so they just kept giving me more they did things that they normally don't do on tryouts. At least that's what they told me, you know, <laughs> so throwing me off the ropes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, and then I stuck with it and that's it. Um, I, I mostly know, you know, your career starting at kind of the sexual harassment part of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I don't know much before that actually. So what, you know, uh, were you just an idol coming in, uh, initially, you know, and, and what was kind of the idea behind just an idol at the time? Uh, well, a lot of people know this and a lot of people don't. My name is just an idol. It's spelled differently. Last name. Mm-hmm. So, um, when I was clever. finished, yeah, I know, very clever. Uh, looking back, I always I tell people this now um, because wrestling, you can create, you know, you can create a character and things right. like that. Um, I've always said the best character is an extension of yourself because mm-hmm. um, if not, you, you can't fake it a hundred percent, you know. Um, so I say that I wish I would have gone with a different name. Now, you know, I just I don't know. I just because I have so many friends that you know, when I find out their real name, I'm like, wow. Well, not to sound anything like wrestling, you know, <laughs> you know, um, so it's, it, it, I wonder what it would be like, but when I was done training, they, uh, they said, well, you, I was trying to think of a name and all that stuff going through that whole phase. And they said, well, you have a name. I was like, and they said my name, Justin Idol. And I was like, okay. They said, no, Justin Idol. I was like, okay. I didn't get it. You know, and then they said it slow, just an idol. And I was like, ah, that's pretty cool. You know? So that's how I got my name and everything. I stuck with that. Um, but then I, I broke into the business with my training partner, uh, Brett Paradise. I'm sure, some people are gonna watch this and give it a nice laugh. But you know, it was a, uh, it was kind of an odd couple type relationship uh, that didn't last too long. And then when I moved to the area, or no, I was already in the area actually. I started wrestling at a promotion out in West Virginia. I got discovered some, by some guys that wrestle in the area or used to wrestle in this area, and then that's how I got discovered and brought to Western Pennsylvania. Okay. So, and then I was did singles run. I did a singles run in PWX for a while. Then I finally went to IWC, and that's when I started doing the, uh, you know, the tag team with sexual harassment. Let, let's for anybody that hasn't seen that because sexual harassment hasn't been a regular team for at least five years, right? Right. Right. Um, what was kind of the idea behind it? And yeah. you and you were like the set the second iteration, I believe, mm-hmm. of the team up with sexual harassment. I think I was the. Th- Third iteration. Third? Okay. Because uh, JT Rogers and Eric Ecstasy were sexual harassment. Um, and they were both flamboyant. We'll say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then JT Rogers left wrestling for, you know, personal reasons. He just he had to think family, things like that. Um, wrestling just didn't fit in his life anymore. And then I believe Troy Lords and maybe Glenn Spector may have did something along the lines of sexual harassment. I can't remember exactly. I know Troy Lords did. Um and they did the sexual harassment gimmick. I don't know if they were actually ever a tag team, but I think the, I think the stable was still sexual harassment. So I was here the second or third official iteration. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but that's how it just came about. Eric just, you know, he we he came to PWX because at this point, no, I wasn't in the IWC yet. Actually, he came to PWX because he was getting tired of IWC. He just wanted to change it up. And when he came to PWX, um, we just got to talking. We were already friends, and then we decided at that we were there for about a year. And then I decided that I was getting tired and I wanted to do new, new things. Was, you know, I liked it where I was at, but I wanted to wrestle different people. I, was, I had done everything I could do at PWX at that time. 
and Eric was already tired. Eric gets tired quick. He likes to, you know, so um, he loses interest fast. So we decided, I'm going to go back to IWC. And then he came up with the idea we should, re, you know, reinvent sexual harassment. Only this time, we did an odd couple where he's flamboyant and I'm completely straight, like, straight you know? Mm -hmm. And it, I think, and even he says, it's probably the best iteration of sexual harassment because, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, you know, when one guy's just totally over the top and I'm all about the match and wrestling. And I'm like, Trying, just trying to keep him focused as he's skipping around and blowing kisses and hugging one in the crowd. I'm like, what are you doing? And Eric is a big guy. He's a big guy. <laughs> yeah. He's like 6'2", uh, probably two. I don't know, 260. I actually just ran into him at the Ring of Honor show. Did you? Like yeah, a couple yeah. weeks ago, too. So. Yeah. He, I think he texted me and asked me if I was going. Um, but, yeah, I don't get out much for shows down also here. Also weird. I, got, I picked up a random uh, Women's of, uh, Ring of Honor, and there's like an old show. First match is in Pittsburgh. With like Mickey James before she was Mickey James, and I'm like, I think that's Eric Ecstasy in the stands. Oh, no kidding! <laughs> you should freeze frame and take a picture and post it on on uh, Facebook or something. I might have to. I have to pull that DVD out again. Eric X in the crowd. There you go. <laughs> um, but and this was a time, and we just recently also had Marshall Gambino back on the show too, mm. and uh, he was talking about you know that tag division at the time. You know, there was the time of the scrambles and everything yes. like that. And you guys were a big part of that. Yes. Yeah. That was um that was the best time in IWC, at least for us. Um, Cause at the time, I think next to J rock, we were the most um, seasoned workers and wrestlers in the, uh, in the bunch. And we would come up with a lot of the ideas, you know, I was, I'm very, I was very, and I think I still am very innovative. Um, I've had people tell me this when they wrestle me um, saying, you know, and I'm quoting people, I'm not toot my horn, you know, <laughs> they said to me, you know, I like working you because you have innovative ways to get into different things, things of that nature. Um, like Dane, uh, uh, Mickey Gambino has said things like that, you know, things like that. But we, me and Eric were coming up with a lot of the spots for these matches. Mm -hmm. So um, when putting it all together, it just felt felt great, you and, know. And these uh, these are, of course, you know, uh, Ray Rowe was a part yes. of that with J Rock. Um, you know, uh, I think Babyface Fire with Glory mm -hmm. and, and and the now DJ Z mm -hmm. uh, as part of that. I um, probably facade Gar Johnny Gargano. Yep. Some people may know who that is yeah, <laughs> these days. People. Yeah. Um, and then the Gambinos and then us. Of yeah. course, the Gambinos and you guys. Yeah. yeah it was it was great. Uh, I remember one day because we, we did about two or three scramble matches and it was just four teams. And mm -hmm. then they had Norm's anniversary show or is going. It might have been his going away show. The Ric Flair show. I don't you know when Ric Flair was in town. He did two shows back to back on nights. Um, and Norm inserted facade and uh gargano into the match and we were it, it kind of threw us for a loop we were like oh no you know what do we get we've never done five teams before mm -hmm. and so me and eric had the brilliant idea to start the match saying like norm you ran out of corners there's nowhere for us to sit <laughs> you know for us to tag so we went to the front row you know and waited just hung out because five teams there's only four corners in a ring yeah you know and so it created some different uh thing like situations that we were never prepared for and it became a good match, actually. Um, but yeah, that was some of the best time in IWC was when the tag division. Because you rarely find a promotion anymore that has a really hot tag division. Mm -hmm. Rarely. It, it hasn't, there hasn't been a promotion that has a, had that hot of, hot of a tag division since then. Like in this area. And for me, it was one of those things that I'm sure we talked about it like way back in the day. That's when we started going to those shows in, mm -hmm. I think, 2006. And it, it was something that stuck out, for sure. Yeah. So... So yeah. that, that we always look forward to. Right. Yeah. You could hear that when they would announce it, the crowd was ready. You know, oh, yeah. you could see people kind of getting ready in their seats, you know, <laughs> like getting settled in. Like, here we go. Here we go. You know, that felt good. You know, when you see mm -hmm. when you look back at it, it's like, wow, this is great. Like, you know? see, we already name dropped a couple people that you, mm -hmm. of course, worked with in, in those uh, scrambles. Um, but again, this was like, this was an era of IWC where it was guys, you know, SJK, now Corey Graves, mm -hmm. um, AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels were there. Uh, Samoa Joe's made some appearances. Uh, around that era like it was kind of a, a big hotbed at the time mm -hmm. yeah norm he wasn't uh, afraid to open up the pocketbook and bring in you know some names and that's what iwc that's what they were known for you know good wrestling and you know they were the place that brought in the out-of-state talent or mm -hmm. you know the super indies per se you know and that's just you know who they were some people got upset that other places you know like uh the, the hot, the you know, top three RWA, PWX, IWC, PWX, and RWA. Like, you know, they were out, or I don't even know how RWA was around at that point, no. but PWX, you know, they're well, aren't they bringing in names? They don't need to bring in names, they have a different kind of wrestling, you mm -hmm. know. Um, 
IWC, that's the place it was for. That was what that was their niche. That was that made them special. PWX, they have more homegrown talent and they do more of a, in my opinion, more of an underground thing. Especially now, if you've been to the show, they got that like little small arena and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I truly believe that in this area, there's no competition with the with within each promotion. I think each one offers wrestling, but their own style or brand of wrestling. It's like Wendy's McDonald's. They're competition with each other, but they're not competition. Right. They have the same stuff, but yeah, you know, there are differences, and even even shows that have the same guys, like they're doing yeah, different things. Right, they're doing something completely different. I'm doing different things on both shows, a couple shows now in the same area, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so yeah, so but yeah, back to the point, you know, IBC they brought IWC they brought in all those you know those names and everything. It was it was good for the locals to actually get you know recognized and things like that. I actually uh, met Chris Hamrick on actually I met him at PWX years before that, but he mentored me in wrestling. Actually, I give a lot of credit to you know who I am and everything. Uh, to him um that's actually when i was making a living at wrestling and i did it for about four or five years you know um i wasn't rich or anything but i was happy all my bills were paid you know i had mm -hmm. extra spending money to do what i need to do and that's to me that's living that's you living that's, you, like, we were talking you know? about we we're talking about that a little bit beforehand and this is something we don't really get into mm -hmm. much with the guys on this show is like that idea of you know how do you get to that threshold of making a living for off of wrestling Right. How do you get to it? Yeah. You just got to get your, your name out there. Just keep mm -hmm. busting your ass. A lot of people don't like in this area, especially I've noticed a lot of people don't like traveling, mm -hmm. but they, you know, times have completely changed when, since when I was in the, you know, 2005 or before, you know, night to 2000 to 2006 in that range, people were traveling up and down the road. You know, I remember one trip, me, uh, name drop, uh, Corey Graves, Sterling James <laughs> Keeman. Uh, name drop Zima Ion, <laughs> like um, or DJ Z and uh, Jason Gorey. We drove up to CZW, you know, to do a show. Um, Norm came to us to see if he wanted to do this match because he knew that we were for the guys that traveled and weren't afraid to travel to, for wrestling. If you want to get noticed, you got to get out there. You know, so many people are just want to do this as a hobby, you know. Um, I mean, I'm not making a living at it now, but I still respect it enough to, you know, put all my all into it. You know, so um, that drives me nuts when guys do it as a hobby. You know, something happened to this past show this past weekend that pissed me off. You know, and that came back to me. It's like a hobby. You had some people, you know. Uh, I'll say, the, we did a, a battle royal, um, costume battle royal, you know. <laughs> it was just, everyone was supposed to bring costumes and no one brought costumes, you know. And, I, and the reason it pissed me off is because I was, I mean, I'm, get, I'm a bad guy there. I'm a heel, okay. So I was trying to get some extra heat. So I talked to the promoter and I said, I won't wear a costume. So when we all come out, all these people in costumes, I won't wear one. And I'll just say, you know, screw you all. You know, I'm not wearing a costume because I'm a dick. And it would get me some more heat because I haven't been healed that long there. I'm trying to, you know, get as much heat as I can, as quickly as I can. So I was like, oh, promoter loved it. He's like, great. That's a good idea. Let's do that. We get there and we get the Battle Royal together. I'm like, where's your guys' costumes? Um, I don't have This is it. Sorry. This is it. Sorry. What the? You know, I don't want to swear, you know, but I was pissed. And I said, oh, okay, you know, that they didn't need to know all the details. They just need to know you were told to bring a costume. If you don't have a costume, borrow a costume. You had plenty of time to get it together. But like things like that just pissed me off. It's like he booked you for this battle royal with a costume battle royal and you don't have a costume. Am I missing something? You know, it's a, treat it like a job. Treat it yeah. like it's, you know, it's, it's, you're not going to go anywhere in this business if you don't treat it professionally, if you don't, you know, give it your all, you know. So things like that, you know, so, you know, but if you want to make it, you just got to get out there. You got to listen to promoters. You got to put in the time and the money and just do it, you know. Absolutely. So, you know, you talked about a little bit. You're, you've been working different promotions here uh, since I've seen you last in IWC, PWX, RWA. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that each of them kind of brings uh, uh, lately? I know I know you were talking about a little bit. Uh, you're just experiencing RWA for the first time in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you mean the difference? Like what's the difference like at each one since, yeah. I, seen, since, since I seem to be a frequent flyer of all three? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You um, just, you just float in wherever right, you want. You know, it seems when you're and... older, you have that ability, which you've been yeah, having yeah, all the yeah. time. Um, uh, let's see. Well, PWX is more, like I was saying earlier, they're more like an underground feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're more uh, the fans. Yeah. I know. More... they're going towards this uh, fight society. Kind right. Of you know, concept. which I kind of like, you know, yeah. I'm a big fan. Kind of like Rise in the area, the name Rise, and then they don't have you know, wrestling in the title. Uh, you know, I like that. Uh, Fight Society, I'm a fan of that. They've got like an undergroundy feel to it. You know, it's kind of in a small arena. Um, the arena is nice. It's actually nice when you get in there. It's kind of a neat feel to it. And I'm a big mark for a stage, like a nice entry, entrance way. If I don't, you know, that will get me, I'll, I'll go after a show to be, I'll beg to be on the show. You know, um, I'll give them a deal on price and everything if they have a good setup, you know. 
Um, but their fans are more loyal type fans. They've seen people have been coming for 16 years and they get more fans here and there. They're bigger shows. They always draw more fans. Um, I just think they run a little too much. Like they run every two weeks. And in that particular area, it's, you know, it's McKeesport. Um, not everyone has all that money to spend, you know? Um, and then the promoter knows this. This has been things that we discussed. I think they're going to spread actually next year. I think they might be spreading out the shows, which would probably help the company. Um, RWA, they have more of an old school feel. You know, um, you don't have to work as hard. You know, if you can, <laughs> you could just, you could just do a body slam and the, the crowd will just erupt, you know, for something so simple. Um, you know, you get, ch- that's the kind of place that you might get chased out of with an old man with a cane. You know what I mean? Which is a great feeling for a wrestler. It's like, this is, I, I'm l- doing my legit, job. Legit, last show yeah. that I filmed there, I didn't even see what happened, but the wife was going after the bad guy. Right. And flipping him off. Right. Like, oh, really? old, yeah. old lady flip off. Yeah. Like, like putting it all her energy in that finger. Right. It was, it, it was pretty amazing. Right. Exactly. And just like it goes going crazy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's more of the, the old school feel. Um, if you spit on a crowd, if, you know, if you spit on a crowd, like if you not spit on a crowd, but if you're yelling at someone at the end of the crowd and they spit, they could spit on you and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And me personally, I love stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Some guys, in you know not just this area but all areas they have so much of an ego where you know they're you know they spit on me i'm gonna go after them screw that man if someone spits on me i'm ecstatic you know hopefully you've done your job yeah that's my point i'm like this i'm i'm I'm, my in my head i am doing a jig you know i'm just dancing i'm like i'm so happy you know someone does something like that like i pissed them off to that point you know but some people were like i'm gonna kick his ass why you're what do you you did your job why are you so freaking out you know Mm -hmm. I do we see they're more, you know, they used to be smart fans, you know, people that are you know, obviously in tune to the backstage politics and all that. They want to, they want to know every little detail. I think now, um, when I left, um, I did see unceremoniously, uh, the fans were, they were, they were kind of going towards a more family friendly, I think, you know, it was actually a younger crowd too, which was nice. I noticed once guys like Andrew palace and stuff started wrestling, um, he's actually one of my students. Um, it was, you know, a lot, he brought a lot of people in the crowd, you know, mm-hmm. which in turn brought more people and younger, you know, that's what happens on the Indies, you know, it's friends, some starts out with friends and then they tell people word of mouth and, you know, so I think when I left, it was more younger and, uh, you know, I think, you know, not smart family and, and friendly. people that weren't maybe even aware of the other promotions too. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. I don't yeah. Think, rarely. I think there's any crossover fans. Mm-hmm. There are some, of course, they're going to go anywhere and everywhere to watch wrestling. Um, I've talked to my wife about this, you know, just, and she says like, you know, even she doesn't even like wrestling, you know, she says if wrestling is on this, people, will this, come. This, despite having been part of an angle one time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> why, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, but she does, she, um, she said that, you know, if wrestling, if wrestling is going on, fans are going to come no matter what, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it's just, I don't know, but that's, pretty, that's why I think about the big three, you know, you, um, you mentioned training there briefly. Um, so I, d- I definitely want to touch on that. Um, you know, how did you get into being a trainer and, and, and what was that experience like for you? Well, uh, super hentai ran the school mm-hmm. for a while. And that was under uh, the Chuck, Rob- Chuck Roberts IWC. IWC Chuck Roberts era. <laughs> um, he Chuck decided to reopen the school. It was around when Norm was around. It was uh, called the Coalition of Competition. Uh, Shirley Doe ran it. Uh, Chuck decided to reopen the school. We were gonna go with the Coalition of Competition, but we, um, you know, we decided. You know, is I think they decided. Well, it's, Doe didn't want anyone to use that name. It was kind of like close to the heart. So we then we came up with the Iron City Wrestling Academy. Uh, so hentai actually started training a little bit before me. And I think one class and then, uh, Chuck came to me to ask me if I wanted to train and I was like, well, yeah, sure. Um, and I started the second class probably about four months after hentai did, I believe. So that's how I got into it. Chuck just came up to ask me, uh, things were going good for a while, but then, uh, hentai actually, he was getting burned out a little bit because he had, just, he had a lot going on. And, uh, you know, he was actually still in school. Uh, things like that. He just didn't have any time, you know? Mm-hmm. So I actually took over as head trainer for about two years or so, but then I had to, uh, bow out because of just personal things. It's hard. It's a lot of time, you know, it's just, it, it's, you know, when you're driving and I had, it was about a 40 to 45 minute drive, but each way to me at the time, you know, and it's as much as I, you know, I was getting paid, but you know, I wasn't making much more after everything was said and done. I was going there multiple times a week and, 
I was actually, I wasn't able to, and actually I think I was going through a back injury at the time, if I remember correctly. And sometimes when students would cancel, there'd be one student there and I wasn't able to get into the ring and bump as much and do as much as I would have liked to. So I realized that I, something, you know, if I'm in pain, you know, it's not fair to the students once. And then I kind of bowed out, but actually coincidentally, Hentai was coming back at that time. So it worked out really well, you know? So then he took over to school again. And I think Chris LaRusso runs the school now. Yeah, he does. But, you know, this, trainers come and go. It's on the indies. It's hard to keep a trainer that's going to be there yeah, for like a decade. I know Shimo was there for a bit, too. Yeah. So. yeah, he was there for a cup of coffee. Yeah. He trained, I think, Bronco McBride and John Roden. Mm -hmm. You know, those guys turned out great. You can tell. You can see You can see Shima in them when they wrestle you can you know, i think a lot of times you can see your trainer it was probably before and i think i was just like yeah when the two rednecks come out doing moonsaults i know she <laughs> right yeah right? something like that yeah yeah that's not that's not normal <laughs> yeah exactly it's not like like it's not the logical progression right exactly. <laughs> things exactly. um you mentioned andrew palace anybody else uh of, of note that you saw come out of there <laughs> That I trained or that came out there? Uh, your your uh, era, at least. Let's see. Uh, I trained uh, Darren De Niro, uh, Andrew Pallas, mm -hmm. um, the whole, uh, the whole uh, Faces of Change. They were tra trained by me and Hentai. Um, i trying to think who else. Because a lot of people have come and go. And right now, those, those two are the two that come to mind that are still, you know, still going strong, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot of people that just they've already they've already uh, stopped wrestling. You know, I don't know. Darren though, De Niro is great because he's traveling. He's getting out there. Um, I think he was working for Rockstar Pro. He's been talking a lot in the ring lately. I've noticed. Really? Yes. Good. 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 It's been fascinating. Really good. Good. He had a he had a huge conversation with somebody in the front row about how he like legitimately like like wrestles and teaches kids how to amateur wrestle yeah. like in the middle of what he the, does He's at, at wheeling west virginia right? right and i'm just like what is he i was on the other side of the ring i'm like what is he doing over there <laughs> and he's running commentary like pulling me over at the battle royal and royal valley and stuff right it's been real weird yeah lately <laughs> but awesome uh tell me about cats cats oh geez so i do this gimmick now Which um, i have apparently not seen any yeah yeah yet. not many you know not many people have it's it's slowly evolved at pwx um but i had never been able to do it um, you know, full on yet. It's just, I don't know why it just hasn't, the opportunity hasn't presented itself. Mm -hmm. Came in the RWA hoping to do it full on, but, um, it, it, circumstances have prevented me from doing it so far, you know? Uh, but the way it happened was I was trying to cut a promo for something. I can't remember what it was at my house. And my wife is works with animals, okay. So she has surgeries, all that kind of stuff. She works at an animal clinic. She's actually the uh, the boss, the practice manager. Um, so you know she does operations, all this stuff. So we have a lot of animals at the house. She just brings them home, and they all have some kind of defect, you know, <laughs> defect. The one's missing an eye. That's the Wink, Mister Wink, who's pretty much my wrestling cat. Nah, we got Idjit. We got we got we got. I'll just name them. We got Salem, Idjit, Wink, Cassius, Tyler, and Mo. Those are our cats. We lost one that was named um, Willow. She was insane. She took off out the door. Um, and then we got two dogs, Fender and Alba. We had a possum. Oh, we, it's, it's insane. But I was trying to cut a promo one time, point, back to the point, and the cats would not leave me alone. So my wife had the brilliant idea. She's like, you should just go into the smallest room of our house, bring every cat in there, which I think four are already in there anyway, sleeping. And just start cutting promo and just, you know, so we did it and I cut straight face while they were just walking across me and everything. It was just insane. And so that's how it started. It, it's crazy how this started. So then she, my wife of all people just was like, you should, you should carry a cat to the ring. Has that ever been done? I was like, I don't think it's been done. Then I realized someone in Japan used to have a stuffed animal cat that recently. Which I it was just here in uh, Pittsburgh too. Really? I was yeah. like, "Are you kidding me?" I was like, Bleh. and then yeah. I told my wife, I was like heartbroken, and she's like, "But yeah, but it doesn't have a live cat, you know." And then people, some people said Teddy Hart has a cat, but he doesn't come to the ring with it. He just loves his cat, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I was like, okay, so can this still yeah, be they, done? They'll probably book you over Teddy Hart. To be What's honest. that? Oh, well, thank you, thank yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, from what I've heard of Teddy Hart, I think yeah, you, yeah, they, they got you. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so yeah, so then the cat gimmick just kind of you know evolved. I got my new uh. My new bracelets here um, that say one cool cat that came in today. He actually just came in today. So I'll be selling these at shows soon. Nice. Um, t-shirts. I'm getting t-shirts made. Uh, they say, show me your kitties, you know? So uh, those will be out soon, probably within a, within a month. 
Uh, yeah, I got all kinds of stuff. I got come to the ring with a, a horn. You know, one of those vuvuzelas. I think that's how you pronounce it, like a soccer horn. V- vuvuzela. Yeah, v- yeah. And that's uh, I call it my cat call. Mm. You know, <laughs> uh, so we selling those at shows. You know, it's it's great. You know, so it just it's just evolved. There's other things in the works, but I don't want to give those completely away. But to make this gimmick just really, really, you know go off the rails so eventually you have to team up with the bearcat keith hot right right exactly oh yeah i didn't even think about that that would be great yeah he's he's been transforming really more and more into this bearcat thing lately that's great he has the tail and everything and there's no gimmicks in wrestling anymore there rarely are there's just the uh tough guy one tough guy two and tough guy three you know it's just rarely find a gimmick and now that i am getting older you know and i like to think uh, you know i I think i could still go you know (laughs) i'm getting booked so, mm-hmm. you know, a um, uh, great match with Sanjay last you. month. Thank you. But, um, you know, so I want to, I got to, you got to, as smart as a smart businessman, you mm-hmm. got to make changes. And, you know, I do more comedy now in my matches, you know, things like that. Um, just entertaining the crowd, completely entertaining the crowd. That's my goal. That's what should, everyone's goal should be, you know? So, but yeah, that's how, that's how it evolved. And it's becoming a pretty cool thing. I've changed all my social media to like, you know, one cool, my moniker is one cool cat, Justin Idol. Um, everything's, you know, it just changed over and I, I live the gimmick. How many monikers have you had through your career? Three, I think. Okay. What were they? <laughs> the aerial icon, which okay. was given to me by Hank Hudson. I didn't do anything aerial. I went up to the top rope for a frog splash. That was it. Anything else, I was like, nope, don't want to do it. You know, I was, but he kept calling it. I'd be there would be shows where I'd come back and do them, and he'd be like, "You still go by Arrow Icon?" I was like, "No." He goes, well, "I'm gonna call you tonight. I'll call you it tonight." I'm like, "I don't do anything else but second, top or second. You know, <laughs> man. Um, let's see. Uh, no, actually, no. That was just Arrow Icon. Actually, no, just two. It was Arrow Icon, Arrow Icon. That's what some uh, people in the back used to call me, joking around, and then one cool cat. So yeah, I like, I try to keep away from the monikers, you mm-hmm. know, I just, cause I have a gimmick name, you know, my name's kind of like that just an idol. It's kind mm-hmm. of a gimmicky name. So it's kind of, I don't want to throw too much into it. You know, I love, plus I like being on the show, a show because PWX wrestlers have a lot, everyone has, seems to have a moniker, you know? So it's like, it's nice when you see them all. And then just, just an idol. I think Lee, Lee Moriarty might have the most. Yeah. I've he's like, he's like Muhammad Ali. He's got yeah. like four or five yeah. or, um, Apollo Cree, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love Norm Connors comes out and says he got too many names, kid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did he say that to him? He said, yeah, he said that in the, at the stump about cancer. Show. <laughs> he's got, um, but Lee, he can have them cause he's incredible. Yeah. Lee Moriarty is, I, and I said this, uh, when he was at a show one time that I was on, I'll leave it out. Uh, but he was, he wasn't, he was watching. I was on the show the promoter came out and I said, this is the best best thing in uh in the area right now yeah, i thought i told him you know to the promoter then i left like, see you later you know i wasn't <laughs> trying to get any like thanks for it i was just telling the truth i wasn't sticking around to get like you know people to go hey thanks me you know, i wasn't doing it for attention i told the truth I took off i don't know what they talked about i don't know who told you know but you know i'm just it's the truth he's incredible you watched him it's so fun mm-hmm. plus he's a character you know he's, he's kind of gimmicky he does you know his voice he talks I said he talks like, who are you doing it? When first time I met him, I said, what's that voice? Is that like Urkel? He's like, what did he say? He's like, it's Chappelle. I go, oh, Christ, sorry. I thought it was Urkel, Steve Urkel, you know? And he's like, no, it's Chappelle <laughs> from the Chappelle show. <laughs> awesome. But, yeah. All uh, right. Yeah. What are you watching these days? You know, other than Lee, you know, anybody you're seeing out on the indies or anybody you're watching, uh, any, any shows you're watching, the promotions are kind of catching your attention these days? Uh, on TV, I don't watch, I haven't watched the Fed or the WWE. Uh, since religiously since the attitude era um so i don't know maybe 2002 i i don't know when it, it's now it's later than that so maybe i watch it a little bit longer than that but i watch new japan and ring of honor mainly um it's i i probably have 20 episodes on my dvr you know new japan because there's so many episodes there's like two or three episodes a week um, All those uh, the ASX channel, yeah, yeah, the they, ASX. They yeah. So it's always behind. It's like yeah. a few months behind, which is okay, you know, because I'm not trying to watch it for. I just watch Man, it. Jim matches. Ross calling New Japan is pretty great. It is wild. It's crazy. Um, and he's still messing up the moves. He doesn't know the names. And that's no, why no. he's such an incredible ring announcer. I mean, he doesn't know half the moves, the names of them, like the you know the detailed moves. Yeah. And um, I forget who does color with him, but he always correcting them. It's kind I, of funny. I remember watching Wrestling Kingdom when he did the one year, and like Matt Striker was just basically like his help. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's just it's his voice and his uh, his his charisma and his excitement in his voice, and that's mm-hmm. that's what makes it incredible commentator, in my opinion. You know. Um, but I watched those two shows. Um, 
Like I said, I don't watch much of the Fed. Not because I don't want to. I got bored with it at the time. That's why I stopped. Um, but then when I wanted to watch it, I started to watch, try to watch it again three day, year, three years later, which probably was like six years ago now. Um, but then my wife or you know, my fiance, girlfriend, fiance at the time, she was like, like she wanted to watch a TV show. And the, back then DVR, you can only hold, like do two shows at a time. So I was like, you know, what got the, what got the boot? Wrestling got the boot. She's like, well, we can only, you know, I was like, I was like, we're going to watch house or whatever else our show was. It was on Monday night. She goes, yeah, you know, and I was like, well, I guess wrestling's gone, you know? Now you have Hulu Man. doing. Hulu wasn't doing what it does the now. Dark Ages. Yeah, exactly. How did we live? <laughs> How did we live? But um, so that's what I watch. Other than wrestling, I mean, I don't. You know, that's pretty much it for wrestling. You know? Awesome. Yeah. You know? What's the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you? The worst, uh, the best thing is uh, just getting out there, just wrestling. You know, I mean, just being able to live like. Not a dream per se, but just to get, to get out there and just be like, you know, the center of attention and you know, all the eyes are on you. You know, everyone likes that feeling, you know, um, the friendships that you can make. You know, I don't have many friends in wrestling. Uh, I have a lot of acquaintances, you know, uh, maybe a few friends. If you can make friends, hang on to them, you know, because friends in this business are amazing. Um, the worst thing is egos, you know, egos, people that don't th th think their shit stinks, you know, drives me crazy it can be promoters it can be wrestlers you know just yeah, things just uh, things like that uh me monsters people are just always all about themselves you know uh just, st just stuff like that you know people that won't let grudges go that away you know um i'm trying to think of an example uh you know just it won't be professional do what's best for business don't do you know what's best for you it's like suck it up you know i was my ex-wife and me uh she actually left me or we were going through a hard time. It comes out, turned out she's, uh, was actually seeing another worker behind my back and I wrestled behind my back, um, in the area, you know, I'm not gonna mention any names for, for that reason. Um, the guy's pretty much blackballed now from the area. He hasn't wrestled in a long time, but, uh, cause the promoters caught wind of it, but he was booked on a show that I was on about five months, six months after it all happened. And we got booked against one another. Did I, I did not flip shit. I didn't go do anything. I, you know, I put my nose down. I talked to him. We put together a great match. Didn't give it a hard time. I was very professional. I did my job. I didn't let my ego get in the way. You know, nothing. Um, the two, so as I'm saying, if I could do that, then mm -hmm. there's no reason that any other promoter can't, you know, put their squabbles aside to make the wrestling in this area better. You know, this is, this is a touchy subject for me. You know, um, there's another example that we were, uh, I, don't know, I wrestled somebody about seven months ago in PWX. He was a, uh, they were, I don't remember his name. I think it was King something King. He was a reality TV star. I can't remember his name that he was in here with his wife and we wrestled the match. We were in the back afterwards talking. I was talking to his wife. Um, and she asked, why is the crowd so light tonight? And I said, oh, there's about two or three other shows going on in the area. And she said, uh, she goes, you guys run on the same night in this area. And I said, well, yeah, it's some of the, there's a lot of bumping heads sometimes that go on and not no communication, not good communication. You know, I was going to get into details, you know, it's uh, no one's business. But, uh, and she goes, oh, that's odd. She goes, well, we're from, you know, all the, I think it was about four or five promotions and um, the promoters talk to each other to ensure that we don't run on the same night. What a strange concept. It, it's, it's crazy. And then um, I was like, oh, and I said, oh, that's, uh, that's Ra awesome. Ra yeah, said, what? Ra Raphael King says the rev. Raphael King. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Rev. Thanks. Um, so, you know, I was like, I was like, oh, that's, that's great. You know? And she said, yeah, cause uh, you know, in this here, and this, she, this is the best thing she said. I, I thought this was amazing. She goes, because we got to look at wrestling as like, it's us versus them, us being the independents, them being WWE. It should be all of our jobs to get as many of us there as we can. You know what I mean? Um, not fighting at each other for the scraps that we're picking up. You know, or the, uh, you know, so, you know, we're living dreams and stuff like that. We love what we do, but, you know, a lot of us, the younger guys, it's, they come in with that dream. Some make it, you know, a lot of guys from this area have, you know, I'm not one of them. I didn't make it to the next level. It doesn't mean I'm unhappy. I'm very happy with the way things well, turned out. you made a living for a while. I made a living for a while. I, you know, I would say I got invited to Japan. I got invited to Germany, you know, and never panned out, sadly, because money and finances, but it, just knowing is good enough, you know, but mm -hmm. I just think the wrestling in this area would be so much better. If people would just, you know, take a deep breath, say, okay, you know, if I can work with the guy who's basically took my ex-wife, you know, come on, you know, and not, you know, just want to kill him, you know, but it was what's best for business.
That's what you got to do in wrestling. You there know, you if you want to make it big, you want to make it succeed. That's what you got to do. Generally, you're popping up again. R R W A P W X. Anywhere else? Uh, social media. Social that, media. Where yeah, people oh, find social you? media. Yeah, um, it's. I lucked out. I didn't have to uh, change my name at all. Like, uh, I didn't have to go Justin Idol ninety nine or anything like that. <laughs> so on uh, Facebook, uh, Justin Idol I D O L. Uh, Twitter, Justin Idol I D O L. And on Instagram, Justin Idol I D O L. Uh, I just recently started using Instagram and Twitter more frequently. I didn't. Um, I've had it for years. You know, I signed up. I was like, ooh, the new hot thing. Signed up for it. Then I was sick. This is silly. Like, why am I going to use all three of these when they all pretty much do the same thing? But now, I because about two years ago, I purged my Facebook and lost, like, all my friends. I had a few thousand. But now I was like, okay, I want to get down to family because I want to keep my Facebook. I got kids now. I want to keep them more, you know. I don't want to put my kids out there to everyone, you know. So I, yeah. I purged it. And then, you know, and then this cat thing kind of started. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start getting it going again. So I uh, started my Instagram and my Twitter back up and everything. But it sucks because my followers are so low now. You know what I mean? So um, if you're out there, share it. Share my, uh, share my Instagram and Twitter. Get, the, get, get my pages out there. <laughs> there you go. It's great catching up with you again. It's great seeing you at the uh, shows with RWA uh, as well. I can't wait to see this uh, cat thing. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Pan out, yeah. especially with that crowd. Yeah, so I can't wait to bring the cat down to the ring. <laughs> see what happens. I don't know what I'm going to do with him afterwards. I get to the ring. I'm like, all right, now what do I do with this you cat? Need a, you need a cat handler. Right. I Who's mean, the ring announcer? Bert. Come here, Bert. Take my cat. <laughs> Here's a lint roller, too. We're probably going to need it. You there know? you go. There you go. <laughs> all right, check him out. And check out all the wrestling interviews we have going on at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, look up Indie Mayhem Show wherever you like to get your podcasts or on YouTube and Facebook or in the, in the Indie Wrestling US archives as well. And check, hey, some of uh, uh, Justin Idol's newer and older matches are over at Indie Wrestling US too. Are they? But yeah, yeah, there's a lot of old stuff in there. Really, old classic IWC is still very available. No kidding at Indie Wrestling no. US. So you mean DVDs and stuff like that? Yeah, digital download. Oh no kidding! Yeah, yeah. The, let's see, oh, like three bucks, five bucks. Oh. I don't know what year it is. So. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.